So today I'm going to be having a quick look at a Gigabyte GeForce 210 512 meg video card. There's uh, a one thing that Gigabyte really wants you to know about this particular card and it is that it supports HDMI. They have a gold plated HDMI connector on this particular card. You can see that the whole back is pretty much about how it has a golden plated HDMI connector. So there's your little connector, it says golden plated. Then there's your supports full HD resolution. This is a whole bunch, all of this stuff is all about HDMI and how this is gold plated. Then you've got main features down here in little tiny text, something about uh, GeForce 210, supports PCI Express 2.0, shader model 4.1, etc, etc. This is a Di DirectX 10 card, so why don't we go ahead and get this open. The DirectX 10 functionality is not particularly important for a card like this. This is not really a gaming card. It is far more valid or excuse me, valid. It's far more relevant as a uh, more like a media card. So if you were building a media center and you wanted some kind of dedicated GPU, if you want to offload some of the uh, processing for HD video off to the GPU, this would be a perfect fit. So you can see it comes with a low profile bracket, which is labeled DVI and HDMI. There it is. Comes with a driver disk, so don't use that. Download the latest off NVIDIA.com. Then it comes with a user's manual. Okay, so the user's manual shows you the board layout, it shows you, um, oh, okay, so we'll, we'll see this in a minute, but it looks like it has a VGA connector as well, which you can actually remove if you're using it in a low profile case, shows you how to connect to HDMI, how to install the software, a bunch of different languages, thank you so much. And then in here on a little piece of foam in an anti-static bag, you have the GeForce 210 512 meg video card. So if I could just get that, wow, look how long this piece of tape is. <laughs> okay, there we go. It came off. Excellent. So, the layout of the card is fairly straightforward. You've got your standard heatsink, which is actually pretty nice. This is an aluminum heatsink. You can tell from how light the card is overall. It has a little tiny fan. This I'm not too happy to see, but my suspicion is that with a low power draw, low heat output GPU like this, even if the fan's not spinning very fast, you're going to get enough cooling in order for it to function properly. So I suspect this doesn't need to spin very fast because when these little fans ramp up, man are they annoying. So it connects via a normal 3-pin header to the uh, to the video card itself. There's not a whole lot in terms of components on this card, so you can see it does use a standard PCI Express 16X connection. At the back, you do not find any additional power needed for this particular video card. On the back of the card, you can see we've got a couple RAM chips and then a couple of clips right here for how the front cooler fastens. Okay, then on the back we will find all of the connectivity from the VGA connection to the DVI connection to the much touted gold plated HDMI connection. So you can see that while the other two are actually nickel plated, okay, so you can see this is nickel plated, the HDMI connector is gold plated. Now they'll tell you a whole bunch of marketing spiel about how this means uh, better support for HD resolutions or, or whatever else, but the reality of it is that gold plated doesn't actually mean that you have particularly better signal transmission. But what it does mean is that the connector is far more durable. So if you were to unplug or plug back in, or if the cable gets wiggled, gold is a soft and malleable metal. And so even though it's not the best conductor out there, it conducts enough and because it's so soft, it ensures that you always have a good connection. So you're not going to actually lose contact between your cable and your connector if they're both gold plated. It's very unlikely. So that is why a gold plated connector is actually important.